good day, good night, and welcome to After What Works. I'm Kevin Laramay, and of course, we are back to talk about the Montreal Impact, to talk about MLS is back, the tournament, to talk about the result or the lack thereof of the Montreal Impact in their first game back after 100 and 24 days without a competitive matchup for the Montreal Impact tonight. Earlier tonight, they faced against the New England Revolutions in Florida, in Orlando, in the ESPN Worldwide of Sports. And they lost one nothing. And we'll obviously talk about the loss. We'll watch and listen to Thierry Henry's press conference together parts of it. I was able to take part in the virtual press conference after the game and we'll listen to some parts of it. We'll also talk about the performances that did impress me from the Montreal Impact side. We'll talk about once again Louis Banks Baloo coming off the bench. We'll also talk about Wanyama Kyoto and we'll also talk about some performances that were, were quite lackluster and maybe the, the thought behind the starting 11, the Wanyama Piet and the Piet Wanyama Dilemma. We'll look at it and we'll look at a few different ways. And we'll obviously, like I mentioned, look at Thierry Henry's press conference, which was, was actually quite interesting. He thinks there's a big lack of fighting spirit for Montreal in this game. We'll uh, also maybe touch, well, we're going to mention it for sure, Thierry Henry. In the first 8 minutes and 46 seconds of the game was knelt. He took a knee with, uh, at some point, the fist in the air for the Black Lives Movement and representing the time George Floyd was uh, incapacitated with a knee behind his neck for 8 minutes and 46 seconds. And uh, we'll look at some images from the games also later during the show. But I think... It's important today to to look at, yeah, the starting lineup because it, it was quite the interesting starting lineup. As you can see on your screen right now, if you're watching the video, if you're wondering, if you listen to the podcast tomorrow or the next couple of days, go to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash sports podcast and network we have a lot of uh, great we have an actual studio a lot of equipment so we can do things like this now so we're both watching together our screen here here's was the signing 11 for the montreal impact let me put myself a bit smaller even so maxi ruti the lone striker orgio Quanquo, victor wanyama safir taider at boyan samuel piet as a left back or right back yeah Zachary Broguillard on the bench and Piet as a right back. Okay. I don't understand yet. And I haven't. This was something interesting. And, and I don't know. I guess Piet wasn't asked to do the full job of a right back. Which would be to support the attack. And like a Zachary Broguillard would be to continue and just go further up and you know continue and, and try to to support the attack really a bit more higher up and try to center the ball and try to to be efficient that way like Zachary Brogillard does but no no when we're looking at Piet's job it, it wasn't that he he was coming a little f- further up on the pitch and then sliding into the midfield and having his defensive midfield position. So, Wanyama was not a pure eight either. He, in the name, in the words of Frédéric Law, like he mentioned in his post-game show on TVA Spark, kind of like a six and a half, and I kind of have to agree. You chase the natural and it comes back always, right? So, when you had Wanyama, to me, who had a, always the... Alright, sorry, sorry if you hear a little noise. I was wondering to make sure it wasn't a bad noise here. It's just, I guess, neighbors outside late at night. But uh, I don't think it picks up on the mic too much. Sorry about that. Live radio, folks. And if you're watching the video, it's kind of interesting. But Piet, to me, was a disappointment. And it's not his fault. I just think he wasn't put in a situation that he's used to. And that is to the benefit of his strength and to the benefit of the team. So we'll see what that what happens of the... Piet Wanyama Dilemma. 
because it's not going to stay the same for the next couple of games. But the next game is only in five days against Toronto FC at 8.30 p.m. And that will be an emotional game. But that was missing tonight for the Montreal back emotion, in the words of Thierry Henry. Uh, a couple of players that really impressed me in this game was Louis Banks, as always. To me, even though the sample size is very small, he is a contender right now for Defender of the Year, Rookie of the Year, both of it. You might say, Kevin, you're crazy. You're going back again on your tangent that you went on a few months ago when you were talking about Louis Banks as the next coming of the Messiah for the Montreal Impact and the best defender since Bobby Hoare, you know. But, you know, I think Louis Banks does have a lot of potential for the Montreal Impact. And I think Louis Banks has performed and has been one of the best players of the club in their six games they played. They didn't play the entire six game, but you, you know what I mean. So to me, that's a very important aspect of the Montreal Impact this year is Louis Banks and his work and the amount of stability and reassurance. He did an amazing uh, save uh, on the line at the beginning of the damn freaking game or mid midpoint saved the clear cut goal and was there to save mistakes from Raitala and from Piet all night long. So Louis Banks truly, truly the best player for the Montreal Impact in this game, in my opinion. All right, before we continue and talk about more players that impressed us, we look at pictures together and we talk about Balou, Wanyama, Kyoto even, and even at Bings a little bit more, let's listen to Montreal Impact manager Thierry Henry's press conference after the game. It was, of course, a virtual press conference and I had the pleasure to take part, but this is uh, the official video that you can uh, watch um, in we'll a second. To English, and, uh, uh, Joy Alfieri from uh, TSN 690. Hi, coach. Um, Hi. I've heard what you said in French and you're talking about that, that fighting spirit. Uh, what in particular disappointed you most uh, tonight about just the overall shape of the team no I told you I won't talk about that no shape if you don't fight and you don't win battles and you lose balls like I said I will repeat the same thing there is no need to even to talk about tactic because there was nothing to do about tactic today it was about desire that we didn't have that it can happen like I told you I'm not questioning the question the the, the desire of my player but tonight it wasn't there hopefully it will be there against Toronto next question Herb is from the Gazette. Herb, uh, you're unmuted. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Terry. Yes, uh, just uh, basically, I, I guess we're all talking about the same thing, but we really didn't know what to expect tonight. And, and now that the game's over, uh, other than that lack of fight, that lack of spirit, is there anything in particular? Are you surprised that your team did not generate more uh, scoring no, chances? Not at all. Like I said to you, we didn't know where we were going to be physically. Uh, but that's not an excuse. Like I said to you, there's one thing that always I've been talking to the team and talk about before this game is how we did we do fight. And you saw that before at the beginning of the season. Uh, and then at the beginning of this season, again, uh, that didn't happen. Like I said, this is not an attack against anyone, but that didn't happen uh, tonight. And so we need to rectify that against Toronto. Next one is from uh, Doug Gallivan from CBC. Hi, Coach. Um, can you just... Uh, explain your motivation by uh, taking a knee at the beginning of the game and um, uh, that that what what uh, just the beginning of the game and the and you you doing that well I sat down for eight minutes and 46 seconds I guess you guys know why so that was just to to pay a tribute and and show support to the cause uh, that was basically it and, and pretty simple Neil Davidson from uh, Canadian press Neil Thank you. Uh, Terry, do you think that the fighting spirit that you mentioned, do you think that is due to the, the long layoff? And if so, do you are you confident it can come back next game? No, listen, I've been trying to say something that happened tonight. I'm not saying that it won't happen again. Uh, you have to be honest, give credit to uh, uh, New England. Uh, we managed to beat them once, they beat us tonight. And, um, you know, um, they, were, they wanted more than us. Uh, we made too many mistakes on the nose, on the no pressure. 
uh, individually and as a team uh, in order to win this game. But uh, hopefully we'll come back. This is something that we we want to have and we did have before the break. And so hopefully we'll come back as quick as possible. Ian. Uh, hold on, Ian. No, it doesn't work. Uh, Paul Vence, you know. No, it doesn't work with Paul. Um, Kevin Laramé. Your mic is open, Kevin. Uh, yes, coach. Uh, did it make a big difference having five substitutions versus a normal three? Well, obviously you have more options. Uh, you saw that we had a couple of uh, uh, Rommel kind of came on okay. Uh, we had an opportunity with Balou at the end, but uh, like I said, very difficult to judge. It makes it better because you have more choices, obviously, and we were running after the score, so I had a poss possibility to play more strikers and put more strikers on the field, but it didn't happen for us to, to come back. Jeremy Filosa, 98.5. And we're back on soccer today. Now this is Off the Woodworks, and we're back on Off the Woodworks, and it's fun to be with you once again today for a post game show. This was Thierry Henry's press conference, and to me, this is a fascinating time to uh, to have Thierry Henry as a manager of the Montreal Impact because of. Uh, not only him growing as a manager tactically, but also the entirely weird situation of the pandemic, of this group stage World Cup format, World Cup champion, Thierry Henry, you know, you know where I'm going with this. Uh, there's something I think kind of fascinating of having someone like Thierry Henry manage the Montreal back right now in this turbulent time with a lot of experience as a manager in a, in a cup format, in a tournament format, and we'll see how this changes and how this turns out to be maybe beneficial for Montreal. But Montreal does start, like, terrible, though, because this loss, it actually is quite hurtful because now you have games against Toronto, against, again, D.C. United. Toronto, clear-cut favorite in this group. Is Montreal better than D.C.? I don't know. I thought Montreal was better than New England, but I guess that was on the Montreal Impact synthetic field. And according to Bruce Arena, one of the worst places in the world to play football. I think people in Montreal will remember that crow Bruce for, for a little while. But, you know, it's okay. We're all entitled to our opinion. To me, the Southern Apic is romantic a bit. So, But, you know, I can understand what you are saying Bruce Arena. And of course, uh, sorry about that. I need to change the TV. I need to be able to get ready for the next segment because we're going to talk about one of my coup de coeur, I would say. my One of my favorite players of the games. And to me, one of my favorite players of the game this time around. Victor Wanyama showed a lot of promise to me. Samuel Piet, we've talked about it. Wasn't that easy? It was a difficult in a weird position. Here's Thierry Henry at the beginning of the game. But I want to talk about Balou. I want to talk about how Balou was able to show a lot of potential still and show that he still have the same move that have impressed us a few years ago late in this game. Kyoto showed a lot of great influence on the game coming into late. But to me, Balou coming into this game, having the best chance for the Montreal Impact in this game, bar none. Here's Balou. And you know, it was a left foot from about 23 yards and it was Matt Turner's biggest save of the game. It was a win-saving save by the goalkeeper from New England. And I do have a great it impressed me by Balu because it looked like nothing. It was like a nothing play. He tried to shimmy there, trying to do a little cross there, came back, put it on his left foot, give a curler. Like it wasn't ideal. It was not an ideal shot by Balu 
And to me, that's really important because you don't score all the time on the ideal shot. You never. And if you just wait for the ideal shot, you'll never freaking score. And we've seen how many times, not just Piatti or other people, but how many times have we seen different type of players trying to just always get the perfect shot on the perfect the perfect cross to get the perfect header or the perfect shot and it never never works it takes forever this looks like nothing Balou took the ball the best shot of the game for Montreal this close of scoring Uruti golden boot of MLS soccer this season so far still did not score in this game and I think that's a good barometer for the Montreal Impact if Uruti score and a Kyoto score, but Uruti, Uruti might be the barometer. If Uruti score, Montreal wins. Maybe not, because he scored against Dallas and they drew against Dallas and won against New England in the regular season. This counts as the regular season tonight. Let's not forget the three games of the group stage counts as regular season game in Major League Soccer for the Montreal Impact. So that is important to remember. That is true, and that does not change right now maybe there will be more season down the road but for now it's a five game season and Montreal had four points after two games and they still have four points after three of course a knockout stage once you get there you get there and it's something different and we can talk about that uh, on another edition of off the woodworks which will probably come after the Toronto FC game on July 15th, later on at night, probably similar to the same timing as this right here tonight. But, you know, if you're watching on YouTube, thanks again to watching. And if you're watching on podcast, thank you for subscribing. We're able to do this and do the post game shows like we're doing this with all the new technology because of your subscription on podcast and on Patreon. And we really appreciate your support over the years. So... What does it mean, the Montreal Impact losing their first game and MLS is back? Not a whole lot, but Thierry Henry felt really angry after the game. You you heard it, and in French, at the beginning of it, if you missed it, he was talking about the fighting spirit. He didn't want to talk about nothing else about the game, no performances, individual people. And to me, that's... Indicative of a player who's, like a manager, sorry, who's frustrated already. Mm, Is it related to uh, how the team plays? And that's what he mentioned, so hopefully that's that. But we'll see if there's any ways for that to change so quickly. Next game is in five days, and then there's three days after that. And then the group stays over. And are you moving on? Are you done? What happens then? By the way, if you missed the news, Nashville's out, Dallas out. Chicago is now in Group B. So, yeah, you got six groups of four. Makes sense. Top two of every group, that's eight. Move out. No, that's six times two. That's 12. Move out. And then you need four more to make 16, to make two brackets of eight. And then it's easy, you know. And you get the four of the six best third place finishers. So, if you're Montreal, this loss is not a good way to start because you need at least four points in this tournament. Four to five points will be... I think if you get five, I think it will be almost automatic that you're moving on to the group stage, well, to the knockout stage, because one win, two draws, yeah, that will for sure be a top four out of six. Even four might be good enough. So you need a win, a draw, and you can afford to lose one of the group stage. Montreal just lost already. They're facing Toronto next. Toronto is one of the favorites of this tournament, along with LAFC and with Seattle. Will. Even Atlanta also. With the way they played earlier this year, if Hezekiah Barco can replicate the form he showed in Major League Soccer earlier this year, maybe it is a potential winner for Atlanta too. But Montreal did not make this easier on themselves by losing the first game. Now, if you don't put too much 
thought into the knockout stage of this tournament if you just think about it as the regular season games, three games. Okay, you lost one. It doesn't matter because you had four points before. You did better than anticipated or than, than people predicted in your first two games. You lost the third. Now, if you get two points or three points for sure, if you get one win, example, you, you beat DC and you, you lose against Toronto. You got three points. Turns out that that one may give you seven points after five games. Not ideal, but not catastrophic. You know, you're in the playoff position in Major League Soccer, you know. That is if you don't care about MLS's back tournament. That's if you don't care about the prize money. And that's if you don't want to go after the CONCACAF Champions League ticket that is dangling at the end of this thing. And that's the question. What is the mentality of the players? So far, players do feel compelled to perform well. We'll see if that continues. We'll see if Piet will adjust as a as a as a right back, or he won't have. Maybe Zachary Brogiard will play the rest of the games there, and maybe they'll find a way to make Piet play Wadiama better in the midfield. Will Uruti score? Maybe Uruti needs to score a goal or two. Boo, boo! This guy for New England is good. Carlos Gil or Carlos Hill, Hill, Carlos Hill uh, of New England. 12 chances created with also one assist. And that's a record for New England players since Opta started to collect this statistic in 2011. So that's an interesting, useless fact that uh, I have to give a shout out to Tristan Amour for sharing this uh, publicly made stat by Opta. And that is quite fascinating. We talked about Louis Binks. Again, solid mature performance by this young defender what a deal what a steal he is to me one of the best young soccer players i've ever seen i've seen a few good ones some of them are playing in europe and for bayern munich now i've seen them when they were a lot younger you know i've seen a few of them over the years louis banks yeah he's gonna play with england one day like louis banks is going to play for the England national team one day. So that being said, that's how good he is. So let's enjoy Louis Banks while we can. Cause we might not be here for that long. Okay. So so let's enjoy it. Let's cherish every time we can watch the young lad. Bellu, I really enjoyed uh, like I mentioned earlier I enjoyed not only his efforts and his chance to create that goal, which didn't come, was saved by Turner, but he created that chance, created that shot out of nothing. But is is his implication there? We saw Lapalainen come in a little later, not having that same spark on the game. And Kyoto will be the one starting most of the games on left attacking midfield position. And will have that role of bringing that spark for the first 65, 70 minutes. Then you sub in Baloo. And if Baloo can come in and give you that spark in the last 20. And gives you one or two scoring chances like the one he did tonight. Every single game as a sub. You just create one or two clear cut replicable scoring chances like he did tonight. He's going to score one every two or three games. If you create two chances like this or replicable or even a little less still. Those goals will be so important for for the impact and for the results uh, of the team. That's exactly how I envision this being the best case scenario. At least at that position. You know, replacing Piatti. You cannot replace Piatti. That's what I was mentioning all off season. I say you cannot replace Piatti by one person. But you can replace Piatti by a committee. And maybe that committee is Uruti and Balu. 
you add in some Okwankwo five to ten goals for good measure. Maybe closer to seven, eight, like he did last year. Maybe you also add a couple of Uruti goal in the middle of nowhere. Maybe he already has three, so that's more than we thought. Let's say he scores seven to ten before the end of the season. And you maybe count another 10 to 12 for the Kyoto Balu committee. Maybe 15 for both of them. Well, you replace Piatti's performances and his contribution on the score sheet and then some. So maybe we're on to something. Maybe that's what the Montreal back was thinking of all along and we'll see if it works but right now in Orlando at MLS's back tournament the Montreal Impact has lost their first game one nothing against the New England Revolution but hooray yes it is not Teal Bunbury who scored that is always a joyful day when Teal Bunbury does not score against a Canadian team he loves to do so he loves to rub it in and I don't think I've ever told this story here on the Off the Woodworks I have on Soccer Today Dwayne has on Soccer Today multiple times it's kind of like his story and I kind of mentioned the story too on a New England podcast that I was on a couple of nights ago it's called the Six States One Pod and it was to preview the game tonight but you know Teal Bunbury is actually born in Canada. He's actually born in Montreal. That's where he's born. Right here, where we're from. Actually, not too far from where I am right now. So, Minnesota right after. And eventually, he was more brought up in the States. But Alex Bunbury, when he was younger, and now Alex Bunbury is the father of Teal, can he his national team? Legend Alex Bunbury played in Portugal, but before that played in the old CSL, played with the Supra, I believe, or the Impact even back in the 93 days, or uh, played with anyway. So, long, long time ago, I was not really following, even though I remember going to one Supra game in 1992, I was eight, so my break down analytically of the roster and to say do I remember if Alex Bunbury was there I would be lying to you if I would tell you that I that I do but Teal did not score tonight so that's kind of good but the Montreal Impact did lose and we'll see if that changes now that they can train together once a day they're going to play a couple games there should be some progression the impact, and we're not going to rub it in, we're not going to use it as an excuse for the impact because it's the same for a few teams in the league and it is what it is, what you want to do about it, you know. There's a global pandemic, you couldn't train together more, as much as other teams could because other teams are living in a place where authorities were allowing more close contact to take place without restrictions, which was not the case in Montreal up until just a few weeks ago, so... The impact, though, they do have a a lack of progression of, of chemistry because of the of the pandemic and everything that stopped, and the fact that they couldn't start training together up until just a few weeks ago. You don't have the same amount of growth tactically of the chemistry of the the marks of just the instincts together as, as soccer players. It takes a while to build these chemistry and these strings of 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 chemistry of instinct of knowing what you're going to do of just knowing each other as players that takes a while to get back and to get all in the same groove and rhythm you know so teams that have been able to practice together a little longer like the revolution and others like philly you know there here's a good a good story for you on philly philly in pennsylvania they were not allowed to train up until just not too long ago. There's always loopholes. In the States, you can always drive somewhere. You'll find up yourself you're not in the state or you go on a reserve somewhere. Well, Philly just went out of state, an hour and a half drive, 
we're not a state able to practice together. You know, there's always ways to do things, but not when you're in our country, in Canada, and in our province of Quebec, and you couldn't go anywhere else. You had to stay in Montreal. You couldn't go anywhere else. So you couldn't just take the planes and and go practice somewhere else. So the impact were in a unique situation, and we'll see if that actually impedes them in this tournament. So far. They've started with a loss, but we've seen teams like Miami already lose. We've seen NYCFC lose also. So it's not like the results have been predictable so far in this tournament. And maybe they will be down the road, maybe they won't. And that's the beauty of this thing. And this thing continues for the next month. And I hope that you will join us on Off the Woodworks for the Montreal Impact game and of course on soccer today Monday to Friday around noon probably tomorrow's going to be 11 if you're watching this live but around noon most days there's games which is going to come a little after the game so we can get some some audio and we can attend the press conference in case there's something happening Dwayne was in the NYCFC press conference earlier today but nothing that's the thing too like they're not the most like it's great the setup it's kind of fun and I have to say it was really seamless to be able to talk to Thierry Henry who's miles and miles and miles away you know seamless talk to the players and to try to get more out of a situation and try to 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 get the the real vibe of a player it was a bit difficult especially with the mask but you know it is what it is there's only so much you can say also about this game it does feel like a preseason game not just the look not just because we're used to seeing this complex for the Montreal Impact remember back in the day in Orlando we used to watch the Disney Cup we used to watch Orlando as Orlando City this scarf here this is an MLS scarf but this team existed before in MLS in the USL, if you remember back in the day, in the, the early history of Off the Woodworks. We used to break down the Mickey Mouse Cup, the Disney Invitational, as it was called, or the Orlando City Invitational, by the Three Lions back then. There was three lions on the crash, you remember? So, that's a long time ago. And that's exactly the same complex that we saw tonight for the Montreal Impact and that we've been seeing for the last couple of, of games. That's the shot. That's literally the exact same shot that we're used to. So it does give the vibe of a preseason game. Looking at the play too, it does give the vibe of a preseason game too. Same for the game of Philly and CFC. Same for Orlando, Miami also. I have to say I have to give credit to Boo on his rocket of a goal. What a goal. Maybe goal of the weekend. We'll see. Uh, that was quite a stunning rocket shot that Clement Diop couldn't do anything to save. And that was quite the, the worthy goal and the worthy winning goal for the New England Revolution. Now, I hope you enjoyed this edition of Off the Woodworks Post Game Show. You can follow me on Twitter at Kev Laramie at Off the Woodworks. And you can follow this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash sports podcasting network. If you don't know, if you're watching us live, please subscribe at the bottom of your screen right here. And as always, my name is Kevin Laramie, and I will wish you a great tournament. Stay safe. If you are living in a hot spot like Montreal and other places where it still may be dangerous to go out without a mask, please put the mask on. Follow the lead of the Thierry Henry, of the Juca Raitala, and of the Safir Taidai and the entire staff of the Montreal Impact. They wear masks. It's okay to wear masks. So I follow suit also whenever I'm in public. But please make sure you don't forget there's one thing really important we have to keep on doing and that's have a great soccer